Oh my gosh, guys, you'll never guess what's going on. Look at this. Some more mangroves are hatching. Could be all right. I just need some pizza. <laughs> all right, pizza's it. I'll get you some pizza. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. You know, it's been a while since I've kind of talked about some of the things happening over here at BHB and the fact that, you know, I started my career for the first, you know, 20-something years as really just a reptile breeder, and then over the last several years, I've kind of evolved into some different things with education, with the Reptarium, with YouTube, and all that other stuff. So I figured I'd go back to my roots for you guys today and talk about snake breeding for some of these people that are like, what does Brian do? Or, hey, I might want to try to breed snakes because I'll tell you what, it is an absolutely incredible incredible experience and it has certainly afforded me so many things in life. So I'm going to do the best I can do to give you guys a little bit of a brief summary of how to breed snakes. I mean, I'm not going to really teach you everything, but I'm going to give you the overview if that makes sense. This happens to be a snow Texas rat snake, which is an albino and aneurysmic, which are both double recessive mutations, and of course, a Texas rat snake. And this is what, of course, would be called a colubrid snake. That falls into the category like corns, kings, rats, melks, gophers, and a couple other things. And regardless, I'll talk about how I breed those guys. So it's a pretty crazy crazy day Noah is what? actually getting his first tattoo. What is that? And this is what you're getting, right? No. What is that? <laughs> That's not what you're No, getting. what is that? I don't want that. <laughs> this is, this is, is that a you're... cat crab? What? Yeah, this, it's my tattoo. It's my tattoo. No. <laughs> Are you no, nervous at all? No, I'm actually excited. I'm not nervous oh, at all. Oh, get out of here. Really? Yeah. Are you serious? Uh -huh. yeah. That is so I know. Sick. It is sweet. I like it. I like it a lot. Are you sure you like no, it? No, yeah, 100%. I really like it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, man. It's oh sweet. That's I like awesome. it. Well, I think I want that tattoo. Are you kidding me? Well, you don't have any more room. You got a plan. Oh my gosh. That's so sick, yeah, man. Sweet. Let's keep in mind that this isn't the only way that you can be successful breeding snakes. This is just the way that I've always done it and had success. And with colubrids, I actually hibernate them. And I've been telling you guys that we have revamped and these guys are going down to sleep probably next week. As a matter of fact, they were supposed to go into hibernation this week, but we had to do a little bit of repair on the cooling system before they went down. So next week, these guys will go into hibernation. Got a chance to take Chicken Strip out. I absolutely love the fact that he's getting <laughs> habituated to handling now and you can actually take him out. It's pretty awesome. Not all colubrids hibernate at the temperatures that we hibernate things in, but of course, things like this Western hognose snakes, the corns, kings, and stuff like that, they all go down to hibernation. And what we do is we'll actually go from 80, 82 degrees, which is where they're at right now, and we'll take them off of heat and take them down to about 70 degrees for about a week before eventually putting them down to about 55 degrees and that's for three months but I have to tell you if you're gonna hibernate your snakes make sure to not feed them at full temperature you know 80 82 degrees with an 85 or 86 degree hot spot for at least three weeks so they can pass all of the food out because you want them to be completely empty of food you have to remember when these guys are hibernating they're not doing any digestion at all so if there's any kind of matter in their stomach it can rot and potentially kill them so you guys drove up all the way from Indianapolis. Indianapolis area where you guys go to school, right? Yes. Yep. Including this guy over here. So that's awesome. You came up last night. You were hanging out for a little bit with the Reptarium now doing the tour here. So, uh, and you wanted to check out the scaleless. What did you think? It's, it feels unreal. Like, yeah. it's just crazy. Like, it's yeah. got the smooth bottom, like with the scales, but like the top is just, it's almost velvety. Yeah, exactly. That's a good, that's a good description. Like, you'd almost feel it's just like really like a really slick rubber. Yeah. But no, it's definitely, it feels really velvety. It it's is crazy. Right? It's soft, right? Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. And you might be asking yourself, why do I have to hibernate at all? What you have to remember is when you're breeding any reptile, or really almost any animal, there are triggers, right? And one of the triggers for colubrids is cooling down or dormancy. Once they go into a brumation type of period and then come out, they'll typically get ready to breed. That's when females develop follicles and that's when males want to breed them. So literally for a three month period, these guys are again down in the mid 50s with no light whatsoever, no heat whatsoever. The only thing we do is we always check on them, make sure that they're okay because if they start to stress out, we want to pull them out. Every now and then you'll have a snake that just doesn't want to go to sleep and it'll continue to pace his cage. Well, if you're not feeding it or anything like that, it'll start to lose weight. So if we see that happening, we'll pull it out, we'll bring it out, and we'll figure out what's going on. Sometimes we can put them into hibernation later. Sometimes they never go into hibernation and we just don't breed them that year. Regardless, it's important to keep an eye on your animals and we check them almost every single day and then we change their water at least once a week or whenever it's soiled for that matter, which typically doesn't happen because they really aren't having anything in their body to soil the water if you get my drift, but we always want to make sure that they have fresh, clean water in hibernation. Okay, here we are. 
What's up? No, what's going on, man? I'm getting ink. That's what's going Holy on. Holy crap, that is so awesome, dude. Yeah, it's pretty oh, sweet. Oh, dude, it looks even better than the stencil. I mean, the thing. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. It ain't even done yet. It'll be amazing. It, Holy moly, <laughs> dude. And yeah. how you feel? How's it feel? Honestly, it feels like I expect like a needle poke in you. Ooh, doggy. This is such a beautiful California king snake. This is a mosaic or what we used to call tire track, but uh, it's got that really wide stripe. I absolutely love it. But regardless, after three months of hibernation, we do kind of the reverse, right? We bring them up, we put them at about 70 degrees for about seven to 10 days, and then we slowly turn the heat back on to 80, 82 degrees with maybe an 85 to 88 degree hotspot. And then we'll start to feed them really small meals at first, increasing the food over the next two or three weeks. After a couple weeks of feeding out of hibernation, the females will actually go into shed. Typically, the males will shed a little bit earlier because honestly, most males when they're actually in shed won't breed. So typically, the way mother nature works is the male sheds early and then that female goes through what's called a post-hibernation shed. That again is another trigger. When you see that trigger, that's when you wanna put the males and females together right after she sheds. For about a seven to 10 day window, she's gonna actually start to develop follicles. That's when you Populate them or put them together to mate, and then after mating, the female can become gravid. With colubrid snakes, it happens pretty quick. So, literally, they come out of hibernation, they feed, they breed, and literally, they get gravid all within a matter of three to five weeks. And then, that female, after going off of food and she looks completely full of eggs, she'll actually go into what's called a pre lay shed. At the end of that shed, we put an egg box in, which is just damp sphagnum moss, and basically, we wait for eggs, which typically happens seven to ten days later. Overall, that may have oversimplified the whole breeding of colubrids, but actually that's kind of it in a nutshell to be honest with you. But I can't stress enough that you don't have to breed reptiles to enjoy reptiles. You can keep them as pets. You don't have to hibernate. If you're keeping a pet, you don't have to breed them. You don't have to do any of that. It's just been amazing. And again, it has afforded me so much in life that I love the breeding hobby. I'll never give it up. No matter what happens in the future, I will always breed reptiles because I absolutely love the process. I love figuring it out. I love the egg hatching. I love the babies. I love every part of it. So there it is, guys. It's a brief over summary of what is going on when it comes to breeding reptiles. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think. As for now, we're going to open up the reptarium. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Sorry for keeping you guys out here waiting. Come on in. Hey, how are you, man? Hey, how are you? How's it going, man? How are you? Welcome, Hi. welcome, welcome, Hi. welcome. Just getting going. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Hi, welcome. How are you? You excited? All right, good. We're going to have a good night, huh? Hi, how are we you? We came from Kentucky to you see you. Oh, my gosh. You have got Kentucky. the biggest fan right here. How are you? What's your name? Aaliyah. Hi, Aaliyah. It's good to meet you guys. Thank she you guys so much. She screamed when yeah. I saw you outside. Here, give me a hug. Ah, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, guys, you'll never guess what's going on. Look at this. Some more mangroves are hatching. Little baby mangrove snakes. There's one little baby out, and we still have five eggs that haven't even pipped yet. Oh my gosh, this is the last clutch of eggs for the year, and I am so excited that they are finally hatching. Mangroves are a rear fang venomous snake, and it is incredible that we have some babies hatching. I guess it's the perfect timing when I'm talking about breeding snakes in this vlog. Oh my gosh. God, I am so excited to see these monkeys. Now, python breeding is really quite different than colubrid breeding because you don't really go into a hibernation or a brumation state. You actually do what is called a cool down. Now, with colubrids, like I had mentioned, you cool them down into brumation, and when they come up, they breed. With pythons and boas, for the most part anyways, you actually cool them down and breed them during the cool down, and then when you warm them up, they're kind of getting to the end and start to become gravid. So the first thing you do is go from, like, say, an 85 degree ambient temperature, which we keep them at in about a 90 to 92 degree hotspot. And we actually drop those temperatures at night. So daytime temperatures, we keep the same. And then we drop at night down to about an 82 to 83 degree hotspot and about a 76 to 70 degree cool spot. Now, let me say a couple things. Just because we do it this way doesn't mean other people don't have success doing it. Other ways, number one. And number two, I hope I'm not boring you guys with this vlog. Every now and then, I just like to throw out stuff because listen, I've spent almost 30 years kind of trying to learn this trade and I'm just trying to pass on some information. If you decide you want to do this stuff, whether it's for a hobby or a business, whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments if you guys enjoy it, if you're getting something out of this, and what else you maybe want me to tell you about things. I'm happy to do that. Once again at the Reptarium, someone that said they weren't going to touch a snake. And here you have Casper. How is that? It's a little scary. It's a little scary, but it's not bad, right? No, not doing bad. Really good, I think the part that scares me the most is when they start rapping and I can feel them rapping. Yeah, yeah I understand. Well, we're, you're safe. 
sake, you're not gonna let anything happen. No. Right? <laughs> For now, I don't know, several hours into this. Getting close though, no? Yeah, we're definitely getting close, man. That is just so sick. And I'm gonna tell you. I'm so jealous right now. Oh, Your art are sick as hell, though. I know, but that is, I want that on my art. I know, dude. dude. It's are you so, kidding me? It's awesome. Unlike the colubrids that actually go off of food when they cool down, we actually even increase the food a little bit during the breeding season because once you start cooling down, you want to start putting males and females together, and the females need a lot of food. I always say that there's calories in, production out. So if the females will eat a ton, feed them a ton because the more you feed them, within reason of course, the better the chance they are of actually producing. We'll take males like this pastel leopard clown which is an absolute ripper and we'll put them in females about five days a week. We usually leave them in for one to two days. If we see a lockup, we'll give them a day or two off and then we put them in another female's cage and we'll usually cycle one male through anywhere from three to five females and we breed them all through the cool down. We typically cool down at the end of December and we'll go January February and into March before we start to warm up. Another absolutely banger night. I guess it's like 8 o'clock or so. Still absolutely really busy. Really, really crazy tonight, but absolutely incredible. Got Nova out. This is Nova's number one fan here. Definitely, definitely. I'm so happy you're here. But I'll still. Lots of fun happening here. During that time, we're continuing to monitor the female's follicle growth. So we have an ultrasound, you probably don't. You can actually pelt for size if they feel like gumballs, marbles, then maybe ping pong balls, stuff like that. In a perfect world, we want a female to get bred by a male every about three weeks or so, or every 10 millimeters. So if they breed at 10 to 12 millimeters, we want another breeding at 20 to 22, 30 to 32, and they'll typically ovulate at about 45 millimeters. And I realize I'm probably boring some of you guys, but I sometimes like to do vlogs like this, so I hope you don't mind. One of the things I really think that's super important when you're breeding any snake and reptile, or for that matter, probably anything, is behavior. Keep an eye on the behavior of the animal. If you see those little tells or those tricks or those triggers that I talk about, that's when you breed them. Females will typically bowl wrap, so they're actually cool seeking, right? Because they want to cool down, so they wrap around that bowl and they actually get a little cooler. That helps the follicle growth. When you see that type of stuff, that behavioral type of stuff, that is what you're really looking for. So don't just do things without looking at the animals. Always let the animals animals tell you what they want to do. Now in all honesty, I kind of simplified all of the breeding, but I really want to encourage you, if you want to breed stuff for a hobby, maybe make a few extra bucks, or even maybe make it your career one day, it really is truly amazing and the experience is incredible. It looks like we are done, huh? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, Noah, that looks so incredible, dude. What do you think? I, I can't. <laughs> it? it still hurts. It does it? Oh my god, yeah. That's a lot of work for one day, you know. Yeah, That's a and lot my of first work. tattoo. Oh my god, your first tattoo. What was I thinking? I know, it was worth it. It was worth it. Oh my gosh, yeah. Just think about it. a little bit of pain for a lifetime of beauty. Could be all right. I just need some pizza. <laughs> all right, pizza's it. I'll get you some pizza. Another day in the books, and it was an absolute crazy day. So awesome here at the Reptarium. Hope you guys liked the kind of breeding thing I did, and I am so jealous of Noah's tattoo. And I may be getting Bella on my leg. I'm actually pretty excited about it. Regardless, I'm going to end the vlog and wish you guys an amazing day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching. As always, your support means the world to me. And I truly love you so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button? Turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video. Make a comment because I love reading about your beautiful faces. Be kind to someone and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow.